All right. So what's that? Sorry. Yeah. I'm being recorded. All right. Good. So I'm trying to do. All right. So today what we're looking at, uh, well, this day anyway, or this lesson is solving rational equations. And a nice, uh, what that is really saying is that you are solving equations with fractions and polynomials together. That's essentially what it's saying. All right. So we're going to have polynomials and fractions together, which is always fun. Now, the key thing here is, and I've always said this in any class I teach with fractions, is the key to solving it is get a fraction equaling a fraction. Fraction equaling a fraction. That's our goal uh, for the most part, because what I want to do is cross multiply, which gets rid of the fractions, and then we're just solving polynomials, which we've already done. All right, so for this example, now I've done it a little bit differently in my note. Uh, and again, there's a multiple ways to do these uh, questions. Not always multiple ways, but sometimes multiple ways. And what I try to do is give you one way that works for all of them, all right? And so again, I'm going to do it a little bit differently on my note. And so what I have here is I have 2 over x plus 5 over 3 uh, equals 7x. Did I write that down all right? Yeah, good. All right, so what I'm going to do so I get a fraction equaling a fraction is I'm going to put these two fractions together. And to make that happen, I need them to have a common denominator, like any fraction. And so what I can do is I can make a common denominator for these two fractions would be if I multiply these two numbers. And that's always true with uh, even fractions in grade nine. Or, uh, but again, the problem here is we got polynomials. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make each denominator 3x. All right. Now, the problem with that is because 3 times x is 3x. Now, the problem with that is I can't just throw in a 3 in there and throw an x in there. So to balance it out, if I have an, I put an x in the bottom, I got to have an x in the top. If I have a 3 in the bottom, I got to multiply by 3 on the top. All right. So now what we have is uh, we have a 6 over 3x. And I have a 5x over 3x equals 7 over x. Now, because these two have a common denominator, I can put them together. All right, so I really have 5x plus 6 as my numerator. All over 3x is equal to 7 over x. Now, because of this, what I can do, I have a fraction equaling a fraction. All right, so I can cross multiply to solve. And so I've got 3x times uh, 7, which is a 21x. And then I have x times 5x plus 6. All right, and what I end up with here is I keep solving. So I'm going to use my rainbow rule here. I have 5x squared uh, plus 6x. All right, uh, what I can do is, well, let's see here. I can bring this 6x over to the other side, and that would be subtracting, so I get 15x equals 5x squared. All right, I can divide both sides by 5. So let's do that, divide both by 5. And so now I've got, let's see, 15 divided by 5 is 3, so I got 3x on the left side. And now I just have an x squared on the other side. All right. Uh, now I can divide both sides by x. And the reason I can do that is because x cannot be 0. That is a restriction right off the bat that x cannot equal 0, right? Because we can't have a denominator equaling 0. And so then my final answer is just x equals 3. Now, if you look at my note, uh, I did it a little bit easier way, but I did it differently. So what I'm going to try to do is do it the same way every time. That makes it a much easier thing for everyone. All right, so I get x equals 3. And again, the restriction here was that x cannot equal 0 because it's in a denominator. All right, so that's the first one. Of course, we're going to ramp it up here. Any questions about that one? Oh, crickets. All right. So example uh, two, like I said, I'm going to go through them all. All right, so example two, what do I got here? Uh, I got x plus three divided by x minus four 
equals x minus 1 uh, divided by x plus 2. There we go. All right. Now, what you can see is already trying to solve this. Much more complicated, but in a way it's easier because I already got a fraction equaling a fraction. So I'm going to cross multiply right away. And so I have x minus 4 times x minus 1 is equal to uh, x plus 3 times x plus 2. All right, and then I'm going to use my uh, foil uh, to multiply. So we've got x times x is x squared. Uh, let's see here. Well, I'll do it the long way, just so you know what I'm doing. x times negative 1 is minus 1x. Negative 4 times x is negative 4x. And uh, negative 4 times negative 1 is positive 4. That's that side. All right, on the right-hand side, again, I have x times x is x squared. x times 2 is 2x. 3 times x is 3x. And then 3 times 2 is 6. All right, I'm going to simplify things. So uh, x squared minus 5x plus 4 on this side. On the other side, I got x squared plus 5x uh, plus 6. All right, now to uh, simplify, again, I want to get x by itself. Uh, so I'm going to move all my x's to one side, numbers to the other, which means I'm going to move uh, this x squared over here. 5x over here, uh, you move that 4 over here, uh, let's see here, oh actually we've got a quadratic, so I should probably, well we'll see what happens, alright, so I got x squared, uh, this x squared is coming over so it's a minus x squared, alright, I got this minus 5x, uh, this 5x is coming over, it's a minus 5x, alright, so I got all my x's to one side, uh, I got a 6 over on the right-hand side, and I got a 4 that I'm bringing over, which would be a minus 4. Now, x squared minus x squared, come on, they cancel each other out. Uh, but then I got a minus 5x, minus 5x, that's a minus 10x. And 6 minus 4, well, that's 2. All right, and, uh, well, I thought we were going to have a quadratic equation here, but these x squareds knocked each other out, so we didn't have to solve that. Uh, a little foreshadowing coming up. Uh, divide by a numerical coefficient, and so we get an x value, let's see, I take 2 divided by 10, so that's moving the decimal place over, so it's going to be 0 0.2, positive divided by negative is negative, so then we get a negative 0 0.2. All right, I'm just going to check the chat, see if there's any questions. Nope, we're good, all right. All right, so that's example 2. All right, again, getting the fraction, equaling fraction, cross multiply. That gets rid of the fractions. Then we're just dealing with polynomials, right? Which is something we have done. Solving polynomials. Now we're just throwing some fractions at you. Continue it. All right, now here we go. The mother questions, the big ones. Now, hopefully, you have the note in front of you. That's what I always suggest when you're following along here. Because you see, I have a little bit of a preview. And it says that Dave purchases 12 hats for $360. How much does each hat cost? Well, you take the money and you divide it by the number of hats. And you would see that Dave has 30, to, he's paying $30 a hat. All right, because what we're looking at is a per hat per, uh, basis. All right, so that's what's going to get us on to example three, where we got Ryan bought a case of concert t-shirts for 450 bucks. So bought a bunch of shirts for 450 bucks. She kept two of them though for herself, which, doesn't make, which makes sense. And then she sold the rest for 560, so she definitely made some money. Uh, making a profit of $10 in each shirt. All right, how many t-shirts were in the case? That's the one thing we don't know. All right, so what we're looking at is on a, for just one shirt. Okay, just for one shirt, uh, an equation. Now, when you are figuring out, because the information we have here is all about how much money she brought in, revenue, how much she paid, and how much she made on each shirt. That's the things we know. And so your revenue, and that's how much money you're bringing in for people who haven't heard that word 
before. And again, for one shirt, that's the way I'm gonna look at this. All right, minus your cost, that's how much you pay. And again, for one shirt, all right, is equal to your profit for one shirt. Again, we're looking at a per shirt basis. Now revenue, when I look at this, this person brought in $560 for all of the shirts. Now on a per shirt basis uh, for Ryan, I, again, I'm going dollars per shirt. All right, dollars per shirt. Now she brought in $560. The amount of shirts she had, she bought X of them, except for the fact she kept two. So I got to subtract two from that. So she made $560 for all of the shirts minus two of them that she kept for herself. That was her revenue. That's how much she brought in. Now it cost her, again, subtraction here, she initially paid 450 bucks. And on a per shirt basis, she paid that for all of the shirts. So I put an X there because X represents the number of shirts. Now, the one thing that's nice and easy that we do know is that uh, the profit per shirt, she made 10 bucks. I just got a nice 10 here. Now, again, my whole goal here is I want to get a fraction equaling a fraction. In other words, I just want one term here. Now, it might look nasty, but we only want one term here to equal to 10. And so what I can do is I've got to get a common denominator. And the easiest common denominator all the time, especially with polynomials, is that you just take these two things and you multiply them by each other. And so I want the denominator here to be x times x minus 2. And the same thing over here. I want it to be x times x minus 2. But then to have the same denominator so I can put them together and make them one term. But again, I can't just throw an x in the bottom, multiply the bottom by an x. I have to multiply the top by an x. So I'll put it over here. All right, so that means I haven't changed the term. I've just changed the way it looks. Same thing on the top, uh, or our second term here. I multiply the bottom by x minus 2. I got to multiply the top by x minus 2. There we go. And so now, if I write this out a little bit, uh, should I write it all out? Uh, let's see here. Ah, we'll just, yeah, I'm not going to run it room. All right, so now I have my common denominator here is going to be x times x minus 2. Now on the top, I got this 560 times x term. All right, and I also have minus, now I could do a little rainbow rule here, so I got uh, minus 450x. And then I got minus 450 times negative 2, which uh, negative times negative is going to be positive, I believe it's 900, equals 10. All right, now I have these two x terms. I can put them together, so I simplify things. That's what I want to do when I can. All right, so that's going to be uh, 560x minus 450x, 110x, plus 900 on the top. And my denominator is x times x minus 2. All right, so now what I have here is a fraction equaling a fraction. It doesn't look like it, does it? Here's the thing. Any number can be written as a fraction. You can make it a fraction as 10 over 1. And so now that I have a fraction equaling a fraction, I'm going to cross multiply again. All right, so I'm going to write this up here. So I got 1 times this thing. Well, that's just going to be that thing. So let's see here. I got, oops, run out of ink here. 110x. And stop me if you have a question. All right, uh, plus 900 equals, then I got 10 times this thing, which is going to be uh, 10 times x times x minus 2. All right, so uh, again, I'm going to simplify my right-hand side. So 10x times x is 10x squared uh, minus 20x. And again, we got our 110x over here. All right, now I get to this spot. I want to solve. Normally I get, like I did my first example, I get my x's to one side, the numbers to the other, and I solve. Problem is here, I know I got myself a quadratic. All right, 
because this 10x squared, it isn't going to get canceled in. So I got to solve a quadratic equation here. So what I'm going to do is move, when you're solving the quadratic equation, by the way, you have to have a zero on one side of the equation. And to keep things positive, I'm going to move everything over to the other side. So I want that first term to be positive. All right. So I got a zero here. I have the 10x squared. But now I'm going to move the 110 x over. And the 900 are going to move over. Because again, I want to get a zero on this one side of the equation. That's how you solve a quadratic. And so I got minus 20x. All right, now this 110x is coming over, so it's a minus 110x. And now I got a minus 900. Uh, again, simplifying, putting our x terms together. So I got uh, minus 130x, minus 900. All right, there we go. So now I have to solve that quadratic equation to find out x, which is, like, why are we doing this, right? How many shirts there are. X is the number of shirts there are. Uh, I see a bunch of zeros here. So I do know I can common factor it at 10, which will make my factoring should be easier. So I got minus 13X, uh, minus 90. All right. Uh, so then I got to factor or use the quadratic equation for X squared minus 13X. Uh, and so, let's see here. Again, I'm going to do my quadratic factoring here. We got x squared here, a minus 90 here. So I know that two things that multiply to give me x squared are always going to be x and x. Uh, minus 90. I need two numbers to come up with minus 90. Uh, how about minus 9 and 10? Uh, so I cross multiply, or do crisscross and see if it adds up to negative 13 x. Uh, 10 x. Minus 9x is 1x. That don't work. That doesn't work. Uh, what did I come up with here? I'm going to check in my answers. Uh, I got 5 and negative 18 are the numbers. All right, save us a little time there. So when I crisscross it, minus 18x plus 5x, that gives me my minus 13x. And so this thing factored is going to be x plus 5, x on a positive 5. And the other factor would be x minus 18. All right, and now I want to solve this quadratic. Well, what are the answers? What does that make? Uh, what part or what number makes x uh, or that part equal to zero? Well, x equals negative five. And what part or what x value makes that part equal to zero? It could be x equals 18. All right, well, what's the right answer, right? You got a quadratic. How many t-shirts did she buy? She can only buy one set of t-shirts. And in this case, because we got two answers, this one's gone because, and again, when you're getting rid of an answer, you have to say why you're getting rid of it. You can't just go, oh, I don't like that answer. Uh, can't buy negative shirts. And so our answer is that she bought, under this situation, 18 shirts. That's how many shirts she bought. A little crazy for a Thursday morning. Any questions at all? Nope. All right. Maybe I'll check the chat here. No, I don't see nothing. Okay. That's a tighten of a tighten of a question. All right. Uh, next up, I'll hit up uh, the last one. Like I said, I'm gonna do them all today. In this lesson, because well, that's just the way it is. This one. It's a tough one. And again, there's a little preview if you want to check that out while I'm wiping down the board here. Because again, instead of per shirt, we're going to look at per minute. So again, different uh, type of question, but same kind of idea going at it. All right, so... So the last example, example four, again, there's a preview there. If it takes Michaela 20 minutes to cut her lawn, how much of the lawn is complete after one minute? And the answer to that is 1 20th. Because after, if it takes you 20 minutes to cut the lawn, it takes you 1 20th, you, you are after one minute, you've cut 1 20th. After two minutes, you've cut 2 20ths. After three minutes, you've cut 3 20ths. After 20 minutes, you've cut 20 20ths, which is the whole lawn. 
All right, so we're going to look at example four here, where you have uh, when they work together, which is always a good thing. Uh, Stuart and Lucy can deliver flyers to all the homes in their neighborhood in 42 minutes. Okay. Uh, when Lucy works alone, she can finish the deliveries in 13 minutes less time than Stuart. When he works alone, determine their individual times. So together they can do it in 42 minutes. Uh, and and uh, alone though, Lucy's a little quicker. All right, so here we go. We're going to look at this in terms of amount of work per minute. All right, around work per minute. All right, so then we have two people, right? So I'm going to look at uh, how much Lucy can do in one minute plus, uh, what's his name? Stuart. All right, I'm going to look at how much work he can do in one minute. And that is equal to the uh, total done in one minute. All right, now, the total done is a little bit easier because together it takes them 42 minutes. So after one minute, just like our preview, They've completed one forty tooth tooth. All right, I can't say that word, but there you go. That fraction of work is done in one minute. Now, Lucy, in that time period, or actually I'll do Stuart here. It takes him X minutes because that's what we're finding, right? We're comparing Stuart and Lucy. Stuart does it in X minutes. So after one minute, he's completed one over X the amount. So if Stuart does it and say it takes him 60 minutes, He's completed 1 60th of it in one minute, all right? I don't know if it's 60. I haven't got a clue. I haven't looked at the answers. Now, Lucy, I don't know how many minutes she's done, but what I do know that after one minute, she has done 1 over X amount too, except for she does a little bit quicker. It's X minus 13 because she does it 13 minutes quicker than Stuart does when she does it by herself. All right. So here we go. <laughs> There we go. Ah, disruptions. Now, again, we have it set up. That's the hardest part, right? It's getting these things set up, and that's why I wanted to go through the, the start of it. But again, I want a fraction equaling a fraction. So what I'm going to do is try to put these two terms together and by getting a common denominator. Now, to get a common denominator again, we've got to multiply these two, uh, two denominators. So instead of having an x here, I want a x times x minus 13. All right, over here, instead of having uh, just x minus 13, I want it times an x. But to balance that out, I can't just throw that in the denominator. If I multiply the, the denominator here by x, I gotta multiply the top by x. If I multiply this denominator by x minus 13, I've gotta multiply this numerator by x minus 13. All right, now, uh, what we would have, well, I'll write it out here. So now we got an x over x, times x minus 13, plus uh, on the top here, I got an x minus 13, and on the bottom, I got an x times x minus 13. All right, so now I got a common number, and they equal one over 42. All right, so now I can put those two terms together. So let's check it out here. I got x plus x minus 13 on the top. Oh, that's easy. And again, our common denominator is x times x minus 13 equals 1 over 42. All right, again, I can put those two together. And so, in fact, I've got 2x minus 13 all over x times x minus 13 equals 1 over 42. And so what I've accomplished, finally, is I've got my fraction equaling a fraction. Cross multiplies. Let's get rid of fractions. All right, so first off, I got one times this thing. All right, I gotta go up here. Uh, might even need more than that. So one times this thing. So I got x times x minus 13 equals, then I got 42 times that polynomial. So I got 42 times 2x minus 13. All right, uh, I gotta do some expanding. 
All right, so I got x times x, x squared. It looks like we're going to have binomial or uh, quadratic again. x times minus 13 minus 13x. 13 All right, on the other side here, 42 times 2x. I know that's going to be 84x. And I got 42 times negative 13. Yeah, no, I don't have that on the best of days, so let's check that out with the calculator. 42 times negative 13. I get negative 546. Yep, checked in the right one numbers there. All right, uh, again, it's a quadratic, so I need a zero on one side. I always like to have my first term here uh, positive, so I'm going to move 84x over and this minus 546 over. And so I get x squared minus 13x minus 84x positive 546 equals zero. All right, uh, I'm going to keep going here. So I'm going to put these two terms together. So I get minus uh, 97x plus 546. And there's my quadratic equation. And now I can solve to find out uh, what my x value is. I could try to factor it, but with those numbers, I could be here all day. I will tell you that I'm going to, or I did use, the quadratic formula. And I'm not going to go through that, but I will tell you, here's what my answers were. When I got the quadratic formula is that uh, we get two answers. Now, this is a little tricky. Uh, we get 91 minutes and six minutes. Those are my two answers, two positive answers. So, the uh, steward here, that's our x value of how many minutes it takes him to do it, because we know Lucy is 13 less. Does Stuart do it 91 minutes or 6 minutes? Right? It can only be one answer, and the answer is this. Stuart can't do the lawn in 6 minutes. It takes both of them 42 minutes to do it. Not, and the fact that thir uh, Lucy does it 13 less minutes. So this 6 minutes is impossible. And so what we're looking at is, this is Stewart's time. He takes 91 minutes to cut the lawn by himself. Lucy is 13 less. So we got 91 minus 13. I believe that's a nice 78 minutes. And there we go. And that's how you figure out um, how, how long it takes each of them to cut the lawn, given the fact together they can do it in 42 minutes. Alone, Stuart takes 91 minutes, and Lucy takes 78. Check the chat here for any questions.